I'm Teresa. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me here today and a happy new year to you all. This is my first video of 2021. Today I've dug out some prints. I'm continuing my um, mission to use what I've got as well as create new things along the way. I have a load of prints already done and I am going to turn them into these fun and funky artist trading block, artist trading cube projects. Um, really cool, fun, easy to make mixed media projects. So dig out your prints that you've already got. If you haven't got any prints made, then by all means go and check out some of my other gel printing videos where I show you lots of different ideas for creating prints and then we can get on with creating these fun projects. So but for now I'm going to move these out of the way, get all set up and I'll show you how it's done. There are lots of different products that we can use um, to create today's project. And I'm just going to run through a couple of the ones I've got here, give you a couple of suggestions of other things that you could use. I don't want people to feel, as always, that you need to rush out and buy specific items because that really isn't the case. Um, although today, technically, I, I guess this would come under the category of a artist trading cube or artist trading block, there are things that you can use that that wouldn't necessarily be classed as that. Now these here, um, these cardboard artist trading blocks, I had these from a company called Joggles, an American company. I've had a quick look on their website and they don't appear to do them anymore. I've had these a couple of years, I will say that. And they came um, really as a, a die cut flat pack. They come in two pieces, you score them and fold them and glue them together into a cube shape. Now, I don't know whether they're just out of stock or, as I say, whether they don't do them anymore. I know that Sizzix um, did do a die in collaboration with Eileen Hull for a 3D block. Again, Google it, have a look. You may find a shop that's got it in stock. I know the Eileen Hull dies tend to sort of come and go. They sort of seem to be available for a period and then they stop doing them and they bring out something different. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, they are a cube shape. Maybe you've got uh, children's wooden cube shaped blocks. You could use something like that. I also have here, this is an MDF um, little chunky artist trading block. Now, this is from a company called That's Crafty in the UK. They have a website, thatscrafty.co.uk. And this is they call these MDF chunkies. This is ATC size, comes in a pack with five in and you just pop them out, glue them together. They do them in different sizes. They do them in big sort of six inch square, um, eight inch square. And as I say, you could use something like that. It's chunky, it's three dimensional, perfect sort of base for what we're doing today. I've also got this here. This is like a little wooden plaque. Um, it's got a notch in the back so you can hang it on the wall but again it's got some dimension it'll stand up by itself you could use a small deep-sided canvas that would work perfectly um this here is just a little wooden house i'm going to use this um to put on top of something as well again just from my craft store now if you don't have any of these um products you can't find any of these products Go and have a look in the kitchen cupboards. I'm sure you've got a some small boxes, a small box for tea bags, or maybe you had a small box um, that something came in at Christmas. Maybe you got a watch or something and it came in a, a small sized box. You can always strengthen up a, a packaging box. If it's a little bit flimsy, just cut some card and, and lamp, glue it onto the sides just to give it a bit more sturdiness. So have a little think, have a look around what you can get. If you want to try and buy something specific like this and you're not sure what to search for, search for artist trading cube, artist trading blocks, something along those lines. Um, find a company maybe that does laser cut MDF. I know um, obviously these are from That's Crafty and they do a whole range here. Also in the UK there is Calico Craft Parts and they do this type of thing as well from MDF, um, either completely closed like this or you can get them that have an opening in so you can actually pop something inside them so again find a company in, in your country um, that perhaps does laser cut mdf have a look see if they do something you know at the end of the day if it's an independent company pick up the phone give them a call and say do you actually do this can you do this um, independent companies are much more likely to be obliging to to sort of customer needs if, if people are asking for certain products 
if the worst case scenario and you haven't even got a little box in the kitchen maybe you've got some foam board or some really heavyweight card glue several layers together to, to make something chunky you know glue some amazon packaging some corrugated cardboard together to make something chunky I'm sure that you'll find um, a way around it. But today I'm going to show you, I'm not going to be using this, this I've just got out as an example, but I am going to show you two pieces. I'm going to use these cubes, I'm going to use this little block and we are going to be using our gel prints. Now I've gone through my drawer. If you're a seasoned printer like myself, you probably have um, a, a drawer full of prints that you haven't yet used. Maybe there's some that you, you really like, some that you weren't so sure about. Maybe you've got um, ones that you were just cleaning off. You clean off your brayer, cleaning off stencils, just randomly um, saving little bits that off cuts from other projects that you've done. So I've just pulled out a selection um, so that I can use these to cover my blocks that I've got today and then I can go on to embellish further. Now my for embellishing a couple of different ideas here these are little die cut books they've got uh, lots of different images in they just just pop out and you can glue them on these are by Studio Light and they are the art by Marlene Signature Collection. Now two different ones there they've just got a different selection of images in each one I like the fact they're die cut they do have a little white board around the images when you pop them out but you can trim that if you really want to I've also pulled out um, some of the Tim Holtz dolls these are the the chunky ones the ones on um, heavyweight card I do also have the paper ones might use one of those but these were at the top of the pile so I've got those I've got some little wooden and MDF embellishments. Got some letters here, different sizes. Got some words. And then some little MDF. There's some nuts and bolts, some stars. And this is a selection of flowers. Just thought it might be nice just to add some dimensional elements on. And the only other thing that I've got, I've got some little wooden bobbins. Um, I'm going to be using those as feet just to give a little bit of height um, to my finished items. Now I'm just going to be using um, a, a regular glue to glue depending on what my papers are. Some of my papers are really quite thin. Um, I don't like to use a wet glue because they can crinkle so I'll probably be using um, just a glue stick, um, something like this just a scotch glue stick for the thinner papers if i've got something that's on maybe a heavier weight card a couple of these things are on quite a, a stiff card i could go ahead and use my usual um acrylic glue um might might do that or you could use something like a mod podge decoupage medium um that sort of thing would work fine use whatever glue that you would usually use for gluing down paper and card you could indeed use double-sided tape if you prefer to do that as well. Now, obviously, to cover the sides, I'm going to have to just measure or just pop to pop the block down on my paper and draw around so that I can trim. But before I start attaching anything onto here, I want to apply just a bit of paint around the edges, um, which will just disguise them. Because when you come to stick and paper onto the sides I don't want to be able to see any of the MDF or the card so I'm just going to give it a bit of paint around the edges don't need to do the whole thing but I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back as soon as that's dry and we can get on with starting to cover them now that I've gone around the edges um, with some black paint which will just disguise and neaten um, the whole finished project we need to cut out our prints to fit the sides and to do that, as I say, you could either take your block and place it down onto your print, draw around it, and then just cut a little bit inside that line, or measure the, the sides of the block 
and then draw out your squares and rectangles onto your prints and cut them out. Now this one, um, being a chunky ATC, I know is going to be three and a half by two and a half inches and it's an inch deep so I can work out the size of my sides here. These cubes just need to look and this one is three inches so I shall probably do about two and a half inches which will leave me a quarter inch border all round. This one here is two and a half so I should probably do a, a two inch square to fit on the sides of that. To do this little house I should probably just trace around the shape of the house that's going to be the easiest way and then cut um, just inside that line just to leave so I'll have this little black border around the edge. So I'm going to go ahead I need to cut six pieces for each of my cubes I need to cut um, pieces to fit on all the sides of my block and my house and I shall be back and we can start gluing it all together. So I've cut out all my pieces ready to cover my blocks I've got my glues here that I'm going to be using and I'm just going to go ahead and start sticking these down. Um, really is quite a simple process. I'm going to start with this little house here. I'm just going to apply some glue. As I say, use whatever glue you're comfortable with for decoupage. And just go ahead and cover all the sides of your various shapes, blocks, whatever it is that you're using today. And just go ahead and keep sticking them all down until we're finished. I've covered all the sides of the cubes. I haven't done the bottom of this smaller one because I'm going to be attaching it on top of here. I have put one underneath. Same way that I haven't put, um, put anything underneath the house because that's going to be attached on as well. Next thing I want to do is attach the feet. I was in two minds whether or not to paint them. I think I'm going to leave them as they are. I could always pop a bit of paint on them afterwards if I really um, feel the need to. But I'm going to use my hot glue gun to do this. Um, obviously a strong glue would, would do it, but just for speed I'm, I'm going to be using my hot glue gun. I'm just going to be attaching two of these little bobbins to the narrow block like so and I'm going to be popping um, four onto the base of this cube And again, if you're looking for something like this, you want to go to your craft store or search online for um, small wooden bobbin, craft bobbins, that sort of thing. Should be fairly easy to pick up wherever you are. I will say, un unfortunately, I get a, a lot of comments, I get a lot of messages, people saying, where can I get this item? I live in this particular country. And, you know, with, with, with the best will in the world, I can't answer all those questions. I live in England, in, in the UK. I support local craft stores, our chain, you know, our, our sort of national chains of craft stores. Um online craft stores here in the UK. I do put links in the Amazon storefronts down below for the UK and the US if I can find things. So the basic products that I use time and time again, I do put there. But, you know, it's, it's sometimes I think it is a little unfair when people say, I live in this particular country, where can I get that from? I 
don't have the time to take out of my day to sit down and Google craft stores in your country, you know, the time that you took you to, to email me and ask me, you could have done a little search for yourself. So with, you know, utmost respect, if, if you ever ask that question and don't get an answer or if you just get the answer that's like, I'm sorry, I don't know, it's because I don't know. I don't live in other countries. I can't tell you where your local store is to, to purchase these items, you know, but I can give you advice on what to search for, what alternatives you can use if you can't find the same thing that I've got. And really that is, is the best that I can do, unfortunately. Now, I want to attach these blocks together, but I want a little bit of space in between. So I'm thinking, I'm just gonna find um, something just a little bit of card or foam board or something just just to um raise this block up slightly so i've just got a bit of foam board here I'm just going to attach that in the center. And then just attach the other block on top. And then I can attach my house to the top of that. I do want to put a little bobbin on the top of the other one, the smaller one. So now we've got the basics. Um, let me just zoom back out again. There we go. The basics of the construction down we can go ahead and decorate with various little stickers die cuts wooden embellishments bits and pieces like that whatever you've got whatever you want to use um you could cut images out of magazines cut letters and words out of magazines um use stamps rubber stamps lots of ideas um or if indeed you like these as they are um just leave that as it is so I'm going to take a little time, um, pop my embellishments on and I'll be back to show you the finished items at the end. And here's my finished projects for today. The stacking cubes I've done in a more whimsical style. I've used the Art by Marlene Studio Light um, die cut collage images and we've got sort of funky heart, star, fish on there, little angel and a face couple of birds and another star, another bird and a face. I've used um, a little MDF flower and the word art. Still undecided whether to paint these legs black or not, maybe add some twine. I don't know. For now, I'm going to leave them. I'm quite happy to leave them as they are. But that's my sort of whimsical artist trading block stack. The little chunky um, artist trading card, the MDF one, I've done in a more vintage style. So we've got some Scrabble tiles and one of those Tim Holtz um, paper dolls there. Um, I was inspired by the fact that this is a sort of engineering magazine that the print was done on. So there's this um, sort of layout in the background. I've added a star at the top, put a bit of black card in the middle so I could put some tiny MDF cogs in there. Just attached it on a spiral of um, wire. Left the back of this fairly simple, just stuck a sticker on there, a vintage sticker, but it tied in with the with the colour scheme. 
So these do stand up. Obviously, if I stand them up, you can't see them from the overhead view, which is why I've got them uh, lying down. But just to show you two sort of differing styles there. But really enjoyed these. Great way to use up those prints, those offcuts of prints, the, the clean up papers, the things that are perhaps sort of not so good on their own. But once you cut them down and use them as part of a larger project, they really take on a life of their own. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And as with all of my gel printing videos, the end card will have a link to a playlist with all my gel printing videos in. Lots of ideas for creating prints, um, not only using paints, but using inks, um, ink pads, pastels, all different products, as well as plenty of ideas for how to use your prints um, once you've created them as well. But for now, that's all. Bye.